What is going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. Today, we're talking about this infamous CGC book that's been going around social media already over the last uh, 24 hours. This Ultimate Fallout 4 facsimile edition was graded by CGC as a first print Ultimate Fallout 4. I'm going to dive into this from a couple of different angles because not only is this an, an issue with CGC, but it goes to the, the, the bigger issue of if the facsimile editions are becoming a bigger problem. And of course, as you guys can see in the title, we're continuing the theme of scams. And I'm going to break that down. But before we get into it, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Check out all the awesome links in the description below as well. But let's just get right into this. So uh, as I said, this, I, I got hit up on Instagram. I had so many messages like, yo, did you see this? <laughs> you you got to talk about this. And I'm like, yep, I already seen it. Um, we're going to zoom in here. This is the facsimile edition reprint. And, and I know it's a little blurry here, especially on the, the finer print, but let's read this CGC label here. Ultimate Fallout number four. Marvel Comics, October 2011. All right. First appearance of the new Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Uh, poly bag removed. So it's out of the poly bag. Uh, Bendis, Hickman, and Spencer story. You see here clearly that they are representing this book as an ultimate fallout number four. First print. If it was facsimile, they would have noted that. 9.8 white pages. How do we know it's a facsimile? Uh, ironically enough, we've been talking about scams and the issue with this facsimile for a couple of weeks now, at least on my channel. I did the video talking about the eBay seller that sold two of the facsimile copies as first prints for $300 and $400 each. Talked about the legalities and how that that individual could, can face serious legal ramifications. Uh, and then I ended up falling victim of a, a, a bit of a scam myself uh, later in the week last week. I talked about that on my live stream. Uh, but but again, for those that aren't familiar with what makes this a facsimile edition different than the first print is, you got a red Marvel logo instead of a kind of a blackish charcoal one. And the barcode is different. Uh, the barcode's a little slimmer in width, uh, meaning the white box. The regular one goes out a little bit more to like right about here and it's the same price. So that's confusing, right? Uh, but uh, you got to look at the barcode because this is issue one. It's a facsimile reprint issue one, whereas Ultimate Fallout 4 is issue four. And you would see that first number being a four zero zero four. All right. That's how we know that this is the facsimile reprint. Okay. So I've heard. So many different takes on th these issues that they as they've transpired since the release of this book. A lot of people are saying, you know, this is an issue with um with with Marvel and the publishers themselves. They they have to make the book more uh, visibly differentiable, <laughs> right? Than the first print. Well, you know, here's the thing: to kind of play devil's advocate. The facsimile edition is just that. It's a facsimile edition. It's supposed to look as much like the original as possible. But look, I'm, I'm with you guys. There's discrepancies here where you pull up the red flag and, and we have to at least have the conversation, right? But then there's, because there is the issue of folks taking advantage. You got those sellers on, you, on, on eBay that are trying to pass these off as, you know, first prints. You got people on eBay trying to pass off, I mean, uh, fantasy masterpieces as you, you know the silver surfer reprints as the silver surfer uh volume one issue ones i i saw uh issue three of the fantasy masterpiece that was the reprint of mephisto's first appearance selling it for hundreds of dollars um because they're trying to pass them off on ebay as as first prints uh obviously those are there's a lot more there it says fantasy masterpiece uh, presents silver surfer you know there's more there than this again conversation should be had though can the publishers be doing something different but let's talk about cgc and why i'm saying cgc got scammed we know that cgc has issues uh cbcs has issues no grading company is is without flaws no company 
whether you produce a service or a product is without flaws. We get that. But I always talk about the, the flaws that happen with the grading companies and with CGC. Like there are some that should never happen. This is one that should never happen in my honest, humble opinion. Um, but we can look at it and say, well, somebody must have just been asleep, which may be the case, <laughs> hungover, in a pissy mood. Who knows? But here's the thing. This is why I titled this uh, video, CGC may have gotten scammed because I don't think it's just CGC making the mistake of looking at this book and saying, oh, that's an ultimate Fallout 4 without considering that it's a reprint facsimile edition. And I'm going to pull up why, folks. It's how you submit the book. So for those that don't know, when you submit your books, this is the interface that you see on the website. I want to submit comic books to CGC, right? Okay, well, what do you what do you want the what do you want them to do? Do you want them to um be in mail in the headquarters, drop off? Yep. What kind of service do you want? I just want grading, right? Okay, that's all I want. I'm gonna send some books in to get graded. I'm gonna click next. All right, it gives you the 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 consent form. Uh, we're gonna just agree to that here. Uh, and here's where I think there may have been a problem, and I'm not excusing CGC. I'm just adding context here. Say I had an Ultimate Fallout 4 facsimile reprint edition, right? I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to say one quantity. My title is going to be uh, Ultimate Fallout Facsimile Edition. You see it's right here? Fax Ultimate Fallout Facsimile Edition. Uh, Publisher is going to be Marvel. Oops, sorry about that. Whoop, let's, let's go back here. It's the Ultimate Fallout 4 Facsimile Edition. There we go. Okay, so now the issue date for this would be 1121. All right, uh, declared value. You could put cover price. You may be able to put it. You know, I mean, this book has been selling for, I think it's been selling for up to uh, 15 bucks or so uh, as of right now. So you could put in whatever value you think it's worth. All right, now. You have this in the system. You submit your book to CGC. So hopefully at least one person is going to be looking at this when they're creating the labels, right? Because you create, and, and I don't, I, I haven't seen inside the buildings in the process of CGC, but this is what I'm going to assume, assume. The labels are already created before it gets to the grader. Uh, so the grader isn't the one creating the label. It's going to be somebody that's, Seeing the invoice and printing the label because what do we know about the grade? The grade goes on separately, okay? Uh, but so they can have the the grade the label already in the system. It gets it off to the to the to the grade grader, and then once they get the grade back, they take note of that. They come back to the label and they punch it in. Regardless of how it works, though, whoever is creating the label should be looking at this information, but the person that's handling the book, the person or persons that are handling the book should also be verifying that the information is correct. So you gotta have more than one eye on the information put in here and the book itself. Is this really a Ultimate Fallout 4 facsimile? Is this really an Amazing Spider-Man 129? Is this really a, an all-star comics number 58? Whatever the case may be, there has to be the quality control to making sure that they're looking at these things. What I'm thinking happened here, folks, is that whoever submitted that book did this. Ultimate Fallout Publisher Marvel Comics Issue number 4 uh, Issue date October 2011, declared value, 500 bucks, whatever, I'm just, I, well, for, for 9.8, <laughs> you know, 2,500 bucks. This is what I think happened. This is what I think happened. I think whoever filled it out, put it in like this. But here's the thing, I don't know. I don't know if that's the case but I'm assuming that it is. But regardless of the fact, folks, it doesn't matter if this was filled out incorrectly or if it was filled out correctly. CGC 
CGC being a certified grading company should never make this mistake. I'm sorry. There is no room for, I just, I just saw somebody commenting in a Facebook group saying, you know, there's margin of error, even cost, you know, Costco is going to have margin of error on their supplies. And I'm like, and I literally said, you're not even comparing apples to oranges, but you're comparing apples to space rocks. They're not even in the same, they're not even in the same universe. And, and I know this isn't comparing apples to, uh, to apples either, but do you think that pilots or that Boeing, you know, whoever's making jet engines, what, what do you think their margin of error is for engine failure or, or pilot failure? You know, like pilots falling asleep at the wheel or, or hitting the wrong button or forget or whoever forgets to fill up the, the, the airplane with gas gasoline and do the checks like the maintenance whoever is in, is responsible for the maintenance do you know how many flights take off every year i'm going to assume at least over a million at least what's the margin of error what is the margin of error for a flight having engine failure or mechanical failure it's literally going to be 0.0000000000000000001 you guys you guys get the picture What's the margin of error for a um, an Apple being a, a new iPhone being defective? May, maybe one percent, maybe maybe not even that. Maybe zero point zero one. Maybe maybe one in a thousand. Right? Uh, I, I just it, it's it's gonna be and, and that's very small, but it's gonna be completely different. What's the margin of error of uh, you getting some eggs cracked from Costco? <laughs> you know, like come on. What's the margin of error for somebody ringing you up wrong at a, at a cash register? It's You cannot compare those things to the margin of error in comic book grading. Now, the, comparing margin of error for comic book grading with you know the, the safety of human beings' lives when it comes to airplanes and flights, again, that's different. But I'm trying to make a point, folks. The margin of error for these things with grading companies is not what people are exclaiming them to be. This should never happen. You have multiple people, just like the grades, just like my issue with that book coming back a 9.8 and it wasn't a 9.8. You have multiple eyes looking at these books. You have a system in place. This book should not be passed off as an ultimate fallout for number one. Never, never. There's no excuse for it. There's none. Now, I understand if it got missed. Like, again, I don't know how CGC works. Maybe the labels are created, right? And whoever put the information in, put in uh, Ultimate Fallout 4 first print information. So maybe that person at CGC that creates the labels just created the label wrong. But once they, if they print the label out, and I don't think they print it out first because, you know, the label isn't just a sticker. It says 9.8 on the back of the label as well and on the top of the label. So... You know, maybe they print it out wrong at first. And uh, it, it goes to integrating. And then somebody along that line checks, double checks it. It needs to then go back. Nope, this is, you know, they, they verify it to the book in hand. They verify it to the invoice. And they say, nope, this is, this person had it wrong. And then I don't know what, what CGC would do at that point. If you put in the book wrong in the in in, in your order, I don't know if they would contact the uh, the customer and say, you did not submit an ultimate Fallout 4. You submitted a facsimile. Go into your order. I don't know if they, you can. Uh, correct the, the, the what what's wrong uh, and resubmit, and then we'll be able to process the order. Or or do they send the book back to the uh, to the customer raw because they can't grade it? And, and I, I just, I don't know what the protocols are, but there are protocols set up this should never happen. So when you sit and when I sit and say CGC got scammed, well, to my hypothesis, it's very likely that they got scammed believing that this book was not a facsimile and was indeed a first print because of fault, the wrong information being put in. And even them, even they, the professionals at CGC couldn't tell the difference. So this goes, I'm going to end this video on this note, folks. This goes to all those people saying, victim blaming, basically saying, huh, only an idiot couldn't tell the difference or, well, shame on them for not knowing the difference. 
you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes, all those kind of cynical, narcissistic replies. Look, what's your excuse now for CGC getting it wrong? If CGC could get it wrong, don't get mad at a newer collector or somebody that, that doesn't know the difference. And, you know, they're, they're, they may look at this book and not know the difference. Even though, again, I do advocate for collectors to do their due diligence and educate themselves to the best of their ability, right? To avoid being scanned or being in situations where uh, you are confused of what a book really is. So CGC, the professional, the gold standard, couldn't even not, we're not even talking about grading here, folks. Oh, grading subjective. We're not even talking about the number on the book. We're talking about them not being able to differentiate the difference between a reprint that's worth cover price $4, but it might be worth a little more now, 10, 15 bucks next to a book that's worth $25, $2,800 and knowing the difference. That is a problem. It's a problem. And I'm not anti-CGC. I want CGC to succeed, but I want them to succeed so much that in order to do for do so, we need to call out their flaws in their issues. Because guess what? This is unacceptable. Period. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Be humble, be kind, be respectful. Again, thank you all so much for watching. And again, if you aren't subscribed, guys, please. Please take the time to do so. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you being here and watching and commenting every single day. Thank you so much. Be well. And until next time.